So as per a request somebody put in ages and ages ago about um, how I use Sony Vegas and how I edit videos together, I'm actually creating a video based around that. So you're going to see what I actually do, um, how I create videos, my kind of workflow, and kind of go from there because that's kind of what... Well, there's one specific person I asked for and I think it's kind of quite an interesting thing. A lot of people really like it, so let's go straight into it. So, um, my really, really nice funky wallpaper there. So I've just currently got a blank version of Vegas Pro 12 open um, and what I do is I do customize the properties um, I grab the properties of the video I usually then uh, go and grab um, the match media video settings grab that go into my folder where it's kept and grab that and grab the actual video itself and go open it'll then grab things like the width and things like the field order the pixel aspect ratio the frame rate all these other bits and then down here is things we need to really worry about. So what I use is um, is this kind of as a template. Uh, view transform is one thing that seems to always reset itself back to ACESRT, which is not what we want. So I always put that back to off. Um, start all project, all new project with these settings allows it to keep these settings apart from the view transform, which apparently for some bizarre reason seems to want to keep going back to ACS, which is ACES, which is very annoying. Uh, pixel format 32 bit floating point. Don't use 8 bits. It's annoying and shit. Um, render quality best of course, Gaussian leave that alone, it's usually the default, motion blur or de interlace method we want to turn off, have none of that shite going on, press ok, so there's that. So the second thing that happens is, well basically what I use to store files and store stuff is I've got a separate drive that's attached to my uh, main PC that I've got as a share so I can share it between other PCs around and about for like my laptop for instance if I want to encode on that. We'll just drag it off for remote working. And in here there is a ton of folders with dates on depending upon what they got in. So for instance we've got last week's which is the OP4 Eco impressions and the Brewtime one. So I've got currently got this one which is just a Brewtime one. It is a load of subfolders I'm probably going to get told off for doing that but um, because obviously you go subfolders and subfolders and subfolders and then Windows shouts at you saying oh no you've got too many subfolders I can't cope. Um, so basically as you can already see I've got um, these uh, .sfk files, which are the biggest files, they've already processed my files because I've already imported them once, and yada yada yada. This is the audio file, which is converted to a WAV file from a uh, Audacity file. I'm not going to go through what I actually use in terms of settings because that's just boring and monotonous. So all we need to do is grab that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, which is all the video files and the audio file. I'm going to put that onto another screen, and then going to dump it into the um, project media area of the of our kind of window. So then what I do is I grab all the videos that are relevant, drag them down into the timeline. This bit here is the timeline. And uh, what it does is it, you can see here that this audio here is part of the video that's part that came directly from the camera. This bit here is coming from my external mic, which is the Samsung lc one u I think it is. So one thing that I always get asked is how the hell do you line up audio? Um, but actually now before we do that, before we do that, let's go and grab how many instances of video we got. One, two, three, four, no, hang on. One, two, four up there. Right, so with this, um, let's get this out of the way. With this, um, because I've got different types of videos and because my camera decides it wants to leave a little bit of a minute gap in between it stopping and starting, so there's about a couple of seconds, uh, it doesn't flow properly, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to line up all the audio for all the uh, video that we've got. So I'll have to put four different audio streams in and move around to there. So let's mute everything but the ones we want to do. Um, so zooming in, which people always don't really know how to zoom in, you use your, your scroll wheel for that. So zooming in. Um, so the first thing, hang on, is that actually bulged up? Ah, oh, so that bulged up that bit there, okay. That makes sense. So this bit here is irrelevant. Basically, my camera started and then it decided to stop for some bizarre reason, so we'll delete that. So, here you can see these bits, these sort of lines here. They're three consecutive lines. And what I do is, I at the beginning of every clip, or most clips, I'll um, clap my hand, or not clap my hands, clip my fingers so that I've got a nice audio wave there for me to line up, basically line up my shit. So let's just grab all that minute and move that over so that I've got uh, a lot more space to work with in terms of this. Um, one thing when you're lining up audio, don't ever move the video because what happens with a video is it's locked to the frame rate that you've set it to 
um, within the project. So for instance, if I set this to 30, well, it's 25 frames a second, I can only move it one frame at a time, and so therefore you can't actually line your audio up properly. So with your audio, you can actually just move around pretty much to your heart's content. So always make sure you, if you're lining up, line up your video to your audio, not the other way around. Uh, yeah, no, line your audio up to your video, not the other way around even. So you can see these three bits here. Now I do that by clicking my fingers and as we zoom in, just make sure they're really, really closely aligned. And so that when I play it, so we've got that one, uh, when I play it, it'll go, so they're all in line. So that's nice and that's good. So then what we do is we go and grab that and put that to there. And then this, because it doesn't need to be for the whole thing, it just needs to be this segment, grab that to there. Then what I do is I go and select them all, select all the ones I need, which is by pressing control and then the left mouse button. You should all know that by now. Um, and then right clicking and going group, create a new group. So then when I disconnect from it, it's all part of one group and it's all good. So it means I can move it around to my heart's content. I don't have to worry about that. So that's one bit of video done. So let's just do all the other ones really quickly. Right, so now we've got four, uh, three sets of video with audio attached underneath. Um, what I'm also then going to do is delete that one because that's an extra one we don't need. And then I'm going to delete the ones we really don't need from here. Whoa, we don't want to do that. Um, so what I want to do is just delete the ones we don't need. So delete these. Uh, I'm not too sure what they actually call these these bits, um, but they kind of get in the way. So I'm going to delete that, grab that, and bring that down. So we've got me as a huge screen there. So that's really good. So I don't think anything actually starts until about here. Uh, where are we getting to? Snow still fanning around, still fanning around. So this is where we get to the beginning. So let's listen to it and let's uh, mute the camera audio. So it has a brew. So it has a brew. So let's go and grab the beginning of that and and as you pull the um, so basically what you do in terms because some people use the trimming tool which is okay I mean you could use the trimming tool if you really want to but what I do is I actually just have separate instances of video if I want to do that so um, basically I'm going to trim the video now you do that by going right to the very end or beginning of the clip and you then should have that kind of icon a weird like box with an arrow on it and um, it should say trim event start so you grab that and then I'm going to put it and it will snap then to the point on the timeline that we've got there I drag that straight to the beginning and then what we're also going to do is move these right to the end because they're in the way Right, so then I'm going to copy this, and I copy that by right-clicking and dragging it over and going copy here, and so that's that, so that we've got that as a copy there, so that when I go... So it has a brew. And pause it there, I can then go and grab that. Zoom in again, have a look. Grab that, and then... Then I've still got this here, and then what I'll do is I'll then edit it to the point at which it gets to the beginning. Keep coming, drink. Keep coming, drink. Tea mug. Keep coming, drink. Tea. That sound about right. I think so. Keep coming, drink. Tea mug. I'll do. So then we do that, and then we just butt it up with the beginning one, which I mean, it all snaps in really well. Sony Vegas does al allow us to just it just sort of snaps in and it goes blue when you actually snap in, which is really cool. So let's just play it back, see what it sounds like. Brew. Keep coming, drink. Tea mug. So it has a brew. Keep coming, drink. Tea mug as well. Um, I've just had my hair chopped, which is why it's all styled really quite well because the hairdresser did it and I also have this amazing t-shirt by um, I think it's called Looney Toonie on Twitter um, I'll put in the description yes that's all right so that's kind of that part done now I'm not gonna go uh, and do go through the whole me editing shit because there's no point but when I actually get to the end um, I'll show you the render settings I use and then we'll get to when I get to the end so in terms of fade outs, which people again, people ask me about what the hell, you know, what do you do with your fade outs? So with fading out, um, I because I always do this because it looks good at the end of a video. You don't want to just stop abruptly because it just looks silly. Um, you can do fade outs. Now what I do is I generally fade the audio out and I also fade the video out. And you do this by looking here. Um, actually, let's uh, uh, let's go and oops, that's what I want. Let's go and grab the good old magnifier tool. So in the top part of the um, video there's a blue arrow and when you go to, the, to that it then says fade out offset and you can click that and drag that and it will actually then 
bring up um, the fade in tool, so then you can do fade in and stuff like that. I usually do about a minute, uh, a second's worth of fade in for both the audio and the video, and so that then we've got uh, a nice fade then. So the when we actually play it, it then sort of fades out quite nicely, which is right. Now for the audio, I don't like this. Um, the way the graph goes, it starts loud and it goes quiet like that. I don't, I don't like it like that. So I change it. I do that by right clicking onto the actual blue bar that where the where it kind of starts with the fade out starts, and changing it to a uh, that kind of graph because it fades out quicker and better for um, audio. For video, I would still leave it standard, um, and it just looks better, sounds better. And that's pretty much it. And then all I do um, is so obviously once I've edited it together, it's obviously not edited. Um, but when I go to render, go render as, I suppose I do need to do a separate video on what, I, what my render settings. Um, but basically, what I do is I render it to my fraps folder, which is well, my video folder. It's called the fraps folder because initially I had fraps, and that's where I put all my fraps shit. Um, but basically, I use the main concept A V C. Um, sort of templates really and I go and grab the internet 1080p version and customize that to shit. Um, what I've now been doing, um, I'm not going to go through and actually show you because I can't remember my actual settings which is, so what I do is my bitrate is maximum set, well maximum is 50 megabits a second um, and the reason for that is um, because that's the highest um, thing that YouTube will accept. Uh, it does mean it'll take it takes ages to render video, but it does mean I get a really really good uh, render from a from a raw standpoint. Before it's rend uh, uploaded to YouTube, it looks really good. It means that then I can fiddle around to things later on in post production without having to um, sort of take a hit on quality, as as it were. Um, now when I upload it to YouTube, obviously YouTube scats it right down to I don't know a meg mega second or something stupid. It pixelates it all, and ruins it. Um, but yeah, I do have it at 50 meg because that's the maximum that YouTube recommends and I do have corporate grade internet for uploading uh, when I upload a work. So um, at the moment, and even even here in Plymouth, I mean, it's two meg a second. It does take about three or four hours to, up, to upload, but I usually do that overnight. Um, it does also produce a better encode at the end. So when YouTube's fucked around with it and encoded it properly, it does produce a better encode and it looks better. Uh, you get less artifacts, less other things as well. So it does, it's worth, if you, you know, if, if your PC's man enough, or um, you know, and you've got decent enough internet, I would do it at the maximum you could possibly do it. There's some render settings on YouTube. Hang on, let's just Google YouTube render settings. Um, YouTube render settings is it that one? Encode settings is the one I'm looking for actually. Um, they are sort of. I'll actually put them in the description below because um, oh, for goodness sake, if I can even type. Um, there we go. That's, I'll put the link in the description below of where you can actually get that because um, it's quite a handy little site. So the standard ones, the maximum is 8 megabits, which is the one I used to use. Well, actually, I used to use 60, uh, 60, 16 megabits a second as my maximum, and then you know you should fuck around with it. But for the high quality ones, for enterprise quality internet connections, I do recommend 50 megabits a second or 50,000 kilobits a second. I think it's like 50 million bits a second. Um, and it's the same with things like audio, um, audio, you know, do that as well. It just makes when, because YouTube fucks around with it after the fact and then goes it in their own way, uh, it just makes things look kind of better. Um, in terms of audio, um, I do basically 48 kilohertz a second and a bitrate of 384, which is what I record my uh, audio in anyway via um, Audacity, because that's the maximum my microphone can cope with anyway. So in terms of video, my video is a lot higher than 50 meg. Actually, no, it's not that much higher. 60 meg, I think it is a second. But because that's the maximum that YouTube accepts, there's no point doing any higher than that, really. And it'll probably likely ruin the um, encode at YouTube's end. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, apart from that, I think that is, I think that literally is it. So the actual rendered video, you can I'll put the link in the description below where you can actually see the rendered video that we've kind of just quote unquote edited together which we haven't really but um, and you can go and see that so yeah apart from that I shall catch you in a later video